Let me. Well, what's wrong? It's not coming on. Mom, did you turn it off? Uh huh. It's very funny. People like funny things. You ready? Yep. Well, on the practical side today, I just want to share briefly some of my story with you. People don't really <laughs> care how much you know until they know how much you care. Okay. Encounter 222, and I'll, I've got a quick word for you today. Philippians 4, 8. This is where you'll find your peace. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are just, 
Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are of a good report. Not the bad report, the good report. Think on these things. And right before that, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, Rejoice. Bring your petitions before the Lord with thanksgiving, and He will answer your prayers. He just wants us to be happy in our day. He teaches us how to think. And if you'll go on in that chapter, it says, And this will bring you peace. So if you don't have peace in your life, dig into the word. It's life changing. Let it be your light. Let it be a lamp into your feet. Let it be a light into your path. Hide its words in your heart so that you might not sin against almighty God. Oh, I hope that helps you. Whether now or then, death is not my end. I know heaven waits for me. Though the road seems long, I'll never walk alone. I've got all I need to see. I know.
Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. You know, he really does want us walking in the kingdom of God or in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus talks so much about this. When you find Jesus, you find heaven. And what the kingdom of God is, is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. You know, there's chaos all around. And I, I think the reason I want to share today is just so that we, so that you know, as God is teaching me, you got to choose joy. You got to hold on to it with bulldog tenacity. It's good. It's good. You know, in in the 21st century we live in today, there's not many people that don't use texting, right? <laughs> Not many people at all. So I, I think it's just amazing how how we can text one another and speak to one another very, very quickly, you know. And, and I know I've, I've talked about this before, but it's funny how people have those phones on their, um, on their ears, you know, and, and the microphone comes around to the front. And you can be walking at the park or walking, or you can see people riding down the road. They're just talking. And it's all about it's all about the right equipment and as we get uh, tuned into God and as we get our channel tuned into his channel it's it's so easy today to see that we can truly speak to God don't you think more than any other time today <laughs> and as we hear from God and the reason I say that is because um, this next song we were practicing Thursday and God just blessed oh my goodness it was just a blessing. God came down when we were just working on this music. And I said, guys, are you are you getting anything at all that we need to do, maybe outside of things that we've written? And I said, if you see an image of a title, you know, that's how God speaks to us. It's very, very easy through an image or through a picture or through a name. You'll hear it in your spirit or you'll see an image come up in your mind. You'll see a title. And I'm like, if you've heard anything. And so um, Tim says, oh, this song. He starts singing this song to me and playing. He's like, I'm like, I know I've heard that song, but I've never done that song. No, I really don't know it. Oh, well. And so anyway, later on in the night, I say, okay, guys, any songs that we can do that somebody else would know, somebody else has done. And, um, and it was really quiet. And I'm like, I'm not saying a word. Let him think. <laughs> Just let us see what comes up. And Mike says, Mike's on the bass. He says, well, he says, not really, just, I was thinking, oh, lead me to the cross. And Tim's like, I was just thinking, I was just thinking that. And, you know, and when we started singing this song, oh, lead me to the cross, and, and at the end of it, we were just worshiping, worshiping, and I started hearing the words of this song. And the very first word was, let's see here, it's new to me, so thank you for the cross, Lord. I just started singing that, and Tim stops playing keys. He said, that is the song that I was trying to tell you. I said, you've got to be kidding me. So see, that's how easy it is to hear from God. And so um, today, as we come into your homes, I pray that this just blesses you, that truth comes as you, the anointing breaks the yoke, you know, as the music is anointed from God, that it breaks that yoke, that bondage, those lies that, that you may be, may be believing, that you can come up higher in Him, that your joy gets better. You know, I'll be, I'll, I'll tell you quite frankly and honestly, as, as we wake up each day, if we're living for God, this is the truth, and you may not believe it, because you may not be walking in it, but our joy should be full and overflowing when our eyes open when we are serving God and really he's in us and we know, we know who we are in him, our joy should be full and overflowing when we realize we're awake. So if you don't have that overflowing joy today, just ask God, say, God, I don't know what it's going to take to get me to that joy, but I have to have that joy. No matter what situation we're in in Job's life, he had the good, he was the richest man around, and then he was in the ashes with boils boils all over him but Job Job came forth and he was blessed and he said he said you know I was blessed then I'm blessed now and you know no matter what situation no matter what valley we're walking through if we have God 
then we have joy. I don't care. You know, we've all been through hard times. But truly, when we have God in the hard times, the joy's there. It really is. So if you don't have that joy overflowing today, say, God, whatever it takes, give me the truth of that word. Give me that joy she's speaking of, the joy unspeakable, full of glory, good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. It's what God wants to fill us with his joy. This is what, this is what we all need, absolute 100% truth. some practical side you know people don't really know how much you care <laughs> no no how much you know know how much you know until they know how much you care that's what I was trying to say okay. well hey there on the practical side today I want to share with you briefly some of my story just so you would know who I was and how this all came about and just some of my life, because honestly, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So honestly, with, with all my heart and my soul, with every fiber within my being, I care that people just come to know my Lord and my Savior, that they come to know Jehovah God Almighty and His Son, 
Jesus Christ who came for us and he is our eternal king and the Holy Spirit of the living God that dwells within us. I just want everybody in the world to know when I was younger, uh, I, I love to sing. Of course, you know, you see that on all these programs. Uh, we try to put lots of music on from the time I was just little, you know, as a singer. I loved it. I uh, would love, I love to go pray. We were in revival spirit at our churches and I loved, loved, loved to go to the altar and I loved to pray and I loved to feel the spirit of God because it always came out in tears. So when I would feel Jehovah God, I mean, I would just cry and, um, it was wonderful. It was a wonderful time. I just, just about every time I went to church when I was little like that, I would feel God in his presence and I just loved it. It set me up for life. So there was times through my life that, you know, I, we would work in the church. We did everything the church had to offer. We worked in this one and we worked in that mission and we worked in missionettes and Royal Rangers and children's church and taught Sunday school. I mean, at these young ages, I just love God. There was times I would go uh, to the apartments by myself. I'd, you know, just go by myself one evening and knock on the apartment doors near the church and I would invite the children to come. And I mean, I was little, I was dating my husband, who is my husband now, I would be dating him. And But anyway, I just had the heart to do it. I wanted people to know Jesus. And don't get me wrong, I had crazy paths that I took along the way. Although I had great foundation, I would take these crazy paths at times and get off track. And, you know, we do crazy things as human beings. But God in his mercy, he loves us so much. So he always pulled me back and just took good care of me, but I just wanted people throughout my whole lifetime just to know who God was, you know, and know that he was so real. So anyway, um, at an early age, in my early 20s, I wanted to do a CD, worked on music, worked on a CD, and um, I came home one day and I said, oh man, I've got, I got my CD. I said, oh, I want a million tape sales. I was over the top excited. And immediately the Holy Spirit himself came and spoke to me. I felt in my heart, and this is what he said. He said, what about a million souls? And I immediately, I mean, I, it, there was no question about it. I said, for sure, for sure, Lord. Yes, a million souls over tape sales any day. I said, Lord, please help me never to go down a wrong road. If, if this music industry would take me down a wrong road, I don't want it. I really just want you and I pray that you'll always protect me in that. So my mission and my aim is just souls in life. You know, I, I work a full-time job, you have to work for a living. We have a furniture store and we have a driving school and, and all that and I, I was lucky enough to have two kids and, and that's maybe a different story for another day that you'll love. I will share all that with you. but. At the end of the day, that's where Encounter 222 was birthed. Just a mission for souls. Take the giftings that I have, take the music, take any love that I have for the Word, and I absolutely love the Word. I believe this Word with all of my heart and soul, and I absolutely love the Word of God. I really do think if we're in the Word daily, it'll keep our mind fixed on Him, and it'll keep us on the right path, and it'll give us peace, hope, and joy, and peace, and happiness. So I encourage everyone to get into the Word. But I did want to, on the practical side, just share a little bit of myself with you today. And let's just, as um, this whole region, where we're at here in this entire region, let's just band together churches and people and giftings and musicians and singers, and let's just see revival. I'm believing with all my heart for the greatest revival that I have ever personally seen, where people are truly saved, healed, delivered, set free. The captives just truly set free. I hope you like that. When you align your thoughts with God's thoughts and start dwelling on the promises that's in His Word, really, and start thinking on faith, favor, blessing, really, according to the book of Deuteronomy, nothing can hold you back. God bless. Oh, I know what we can really do. Let's get that chair that's over there and we'll move it over this way.
Okay, everybody, act like you're busy. <laughs> Where are we? I, see what I'm Where are we <laughs> I feel dumb, don't you? <laughs> Come on, I'll get it to you. <laughs> We wanted to share with you a before and after work day at Everything Goes Furniture. Wait, what? It takes a lot of us moving to get this job done, but hopefully we did a great job with your consigned furniture. Come see us and God bless.